Begin our program today with another Toy Town play by S.G. Hume Beeman, The Great Toy Town War. The mayor of Arkville was taking tea with the mayor of Toytown. And although the mayor of Toytown had provided a very special tea with two kinds of jam, cream buns, and a large sultana cake, the mayor of Arkville was behaving in a very disagreeable manner. All the while he was eating the cream buns, he scowled at his host. I hope you'll understand this is not a friendly tea, Toytown. I came here to tell you what I think of you. I've only eaten your tea out of politeness. Then you might have told me that before, Arkville. I shouldn't have provided such a special one. I don't consider it was a special one. Without shrimps? Shrimps? The most vulgar food. We never eat shrimps in Toy Town. You'll be telling me I'm vulgar next. I do. If this is a polite tea, there's no need for you to behave like a greedy pig. How dare you call me a pig? I was going to take your last cream bun, but I don't want it now. No, no, no. Anyhow, I've breathed on it. So there. I was never so insulted in my life. As representing the inhabitants of Arkville, I wish to tell you that we will not have your low animals running about our town. No. Your creatures come out on that ramshackle coach of yours and throw mud and knock at doors and run away and behave generally in a disgraceful manner. There's the particularly offensive lamb who rides in once a week with a long brown dog who looks as if he'd been run over or shut in a door. They sing and make mud pies. And yesterday, I saw the lamb teaching his low companion to swim in the public fountain. <laughs> Disgusting! I won't have such goings on. And if I catch those animals in Arkville again, I shall call out the military and have them taken up. Now, you be careful, sir. Don't you dare molest our little lamb, or in fact any of our animals. As for your military, let me tell you that we too have our military, including a battery of artillery and a drum and fife band. A fig for your military. We don't care that for your soldiers, or your policemen, or for you either. You're no gentleman, sir. What? You're just a fat old man with a brass chain round his neck. <laughs> Before the mayor of Troytown could recover from this insulting remark, the mayor of Arkville put out his tongue in a rude manner and hurried from the room. Passing into the square, he picked up some large stones which he threw at the windows of the town hall. <laughs> After that... He turned and ran off just in time to scramble on the coach as it left the town. Ernest the policeman came running into the square, attracted by the sound of breaking glass. He found the mayor of Toytown purple with anger, contemplating his broken windows. Here, here. What's all this, your worship? I, 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 <coughs> the mayor was too overcome to answer immediately, and while he was spluttering, Mr. Glasser hobbled up, closely followed by the sentry. What is all this, your worship? Well, you may well ask, officer. Somebody ought to be ashamed of themselves. It was that, that, that fellow, that, that mayor of Arkville. He insulted me and then pitched stones through my windows. I seen him when he done it. The scoundrel! Uh, I wonder he's not ashamed. But what was it? A accident, your worship? Accident? That was an act of war, that was. Act of war. I've seen him when he done it. This soldier is right. This this outrage was undoubtedly intended to show contempt for Toy Town and me in particular. The fellow came here and ate an enormous tea, including five cream buns. Pig, pig! I wonder he could look you in the face. And then complained because there were no shrimps. Shrimps? Did you say shrimps? I'm partial to a nice shrimp myself, a nice shrimp or a winkle. Do hold your tongue, my man. We're not talking about winkles. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then the fellow had the audacity to complain of the behaviour of our animals. And he even threatened to call out his troops to them. Troops? Oh, that's what he calls them, is it? Ha, I wonder what they was. <laughs> well, well, you live and learn. Troops? Cool. And one word led to another. And then, look, all my windows. Well, I never. Disgraceful! I always said these Arkvillians were scoundrels. We ought to teach them a lesson. We will teach these Arkvillians a lesson. It is our duty to take up the challenge. And as long as I remain mayor of Toytown, we will never sheathe the sword until our wrongs are righted. Here, here! What sword, your worship? I ain't seen no sword. 
Uh, don't spoil this great occasion by uttering foolish remarks, officer. War. What I intended to convey is that we are now at war with us. Ah, splendid, splendid. The scoundrels ought not to be allowed. You can count on me, sir, to do my bit. I will wave as many flags as you like. I will even wear a flag in my buttonhole. Sentry, go right. and ask the captain of the fort to step this way. He ain't there, sir. What? You see, what you might call military circles... We've known for a long time that this year wobble was coming. And this morning, the captain says to me, Higgins, he says, that being my name, Higgins, war is not far off. I can smell it, he says. I'm going out for to buy a new hat with brass round the edges, he says. You mind the shop, and if the laundry comes while I'm away, be sure you give me white gloves to be washed, and off he goes to work. Uh, and that's the last we shall see of him. He's a prisoner by this time, without a doubt. He ought to be ashamed of himself. Well, this is extremely awkward. Here we are without a commander for our army. Now, who will take charge? Asking your pardon, sir, but what am I doing of? Ain't I been a soldier, man and boy, for as long as I can remember? And ain't I a fellow what's always kept himself smart and soldierly? Look at me buttons. Did you ever see brighter buttons than them? Absolutely makes you blink, they does. Besides, if it wasn't for me, you might almost say there wouldn't have been no war. Wasn't it me what seen that lad shine a stone through your windows? Yes, it was, and so I tells you. Well, this certainly seems an intelligent fellow. I think we could hardly do better than put him in charge and let him show us what he can do. Uh, uh, Higgins, I think your name is? That's me, sir. And you'll soon see what I can do. Very well, Higgins. Kindly, um, carry on. Okay, We sir. place ourselves in your hands. You trust to me, sir. And when them Mark million fellas come crawling on their bending knees for mercy, I hope you'll remember it's me what's done it. On the following morning, the mayor of Toytown, with Ernest the policeman, Mr. Grouser, the magician, and the inventor, assembled to witness the departure of the troops. After waiting some time, the mayor and his friends heard the sound of approaching music, and into the square marched the forces of Toytown. First came the band, playing very loudly, then Captain Higgins, wearing a large cocked hat with feather, and riding a piebald horse kindly lent by Farmer Giles for the occasion. After him came the entire regiment of Toytown Light Infantry and finally a battery of six brass cannon each drawn by two horses. The mayor raised his hat and then turned to Ernest. A very fine body of men, don't you think, officer? Don't ask me, your worship. I don't know nothing about soldiers. I'm an officer of the law, I am. But I think they're splendid fellows. The only thing is, they certainly might look more cheerful. Well, perhaps the soldiers have heard about these newfangled hair guns they say the Hartfield troops are using. Those hair gun pellets ping you something shocking. Yeah, they ought to be proud to be pinged. Besides, they should not have become soldiers if they didn't like being pinged. Uh, talking of pinging, your worship. I see that our troops are armed with muskets firing the old-fashioned paper caps. Hmm? Uh, may I show you this new rifle of my own invention? I sat up all last night inventing it. It makes a much louder bang than the old type and fires tin darts with feathers on the end. Hmm? Uh, you see, uh, that's a great advantage. Because when you fire at your enemy, you can see when you hit them. Because the dart sticks in and uh, wazzles. <laughs> Most ingenious and entertaining inventor. <laughs> Most ingenious. But, uh, but why has the rifle such a fat barrel? Ah, uh -huh. well, that's another special idea. Hmm? Uh, you see, uh, when you don't want to fire it, you can use it as a vacuum flask. Hmm? It holds half a pint of hot cocoa. Hmm? Ah, indeed. It's most ingenious. But uh, wait a moment. Something has just occurred to me. Mm? You'd have to empty out the cocoa before you could fire the rifle. Ah, uh, you can always drink the cocoa. Uh, true. Though one would have to drink it quickly if the enemy charged suddenly. And if the cocoa happened to be very hot... Excuse me, we are now off to the front, your worship. So I'll say goodbye. Likewise to you, gents. Thank you, Captain Higgins. Thank you. 
And goodbye, my brave fellow. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, where is the front? Well, we're keeping that secret, Your Worship, but uh, between you and me, it's at the crossroads. And we're going there now for the driver trench. Well, it seems a curious way of carrying on a war, but I suppose you know best, Higgins. Uh, by the way, I've arranged for Mr. Green to keep you well supplied with jam. Oh. He's bought up a lot of plums and apples and things from Farmer Giles, so you won't be hungry. Oh, that's good. There's nothing like a bit of plum and apple for making a man feel warlike. Ginger's up the inside, like. Uh, yes, quite. Uh, Captain Higgins, we do not usually refer to our interiors on the steps of the town hall, whatever you may do in barracks. Well, you talk about what you like. My job is to see you still have a town hall to talk in front of all. Mm. So long, gents all. Mm. Yeah, a smart fellow, and I should imagine a good soldier. Excuse me, your worship, but where's that chatty young friend of ours? Has anyone seen Larry the Lamb? Good gracious me, officer, now you mention it. It's true, I, I've not seen the little animal for some time. I don't want to interfere with the war, your worship, but I think I ought to find out what Larry's up to, unless the magician knows. Well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Mayor, I do. I sent Larry into Arkville this afternoon to buy me six penny worth of red fire. He caught the two o'clock coach, and I haven't seen him since I haven't. Nor ain't likely to. Hmm? I don't mind betting that poor innocent lamb is now a prisoner in the hands of the Arkvillians. Oh, no. Really, Mr. Magician, sir, I'm surprised at you. You and your red fire. Oh, I wanted it particularly for a most important magical experiment. In any case, I don't believe in war. Oh, Robert. Robert. I'm a magician. And how am I to carry out my spells at the crossroads with pellets and darts and wooden cannonballs whizzing about? You ought to be ashamed of yourself, sir. Uh -huh. Don't you know we are fighting for the honor of Point Town? I thought we were fighting for the mayor's broken window. Well, then I'm only an old magician. Perhaps I don't understand these things. No, I, I think perhaps these are very weighty matters, which are perhaps a trifle difficult for a studious gentleman like our friend the magician to understand. Speaking personally, I, I met some very really respectable Arkvillians. Oh, hey. You forget yourself, Mr. Magician. No Arkvillian was or ever could be respectable. Or their mayor would never have broken my windows. That window is only an excuse, sir. I can see through it. Whoa. Uh, I can see through it. You ought not to be allowed. Go away, go away. I will go away. And if it annoys me too much, I shall stop this war. Remember, I am a magician. <laughs> I, uh, I, I suppose the scoundrel can't stop the war with his magic and stuff. Let him try. If it amuses him, Mr. Grocer, sir, you're having your amusement. Well, let him have his. I'm a going about me duties, war or no war. And the first thing I'm a going to do is to try and find some news of our Larry. <laughs> It was quite dark at the front. Captain Higgins lay asleep in a hole in the ground dug for him by his men, and a gentle snoring suggested that the men were asleep also. Suddenly there came a low tinkling from the direction of the enemy's lines. The sentry was able to make out a small, light-coloured figure which appeared to be crawling through the mud towards him, so he challenged it. Who goes there? Stand and deliver, or I fire! Oh, oh, please, sir, don't shoot. I'm only a little lamb. And the very dirty figure of Larry the Lamb slid over the edge of the trench. The sentry immediately fired his rifle into the air. Whereat a drummer near him awoke and beat his drum vigorously. Whereupon everyone else awoke and began to fire over the edge of the trench in the direction of the enemy. And the Arkvillians, aroused by the noise, let off their brass cannon and sent wooden cannonballs wobbling over the heads of the forces of Toytown. Oh, I'll give you a little sleep, too. Oh, please, please, sir, I, I want to see the captain of the soldiers. Captain of the soldiers? You mean officer commanding? Where was you brought up? Please, sir, in Farmer Giles' barn. And now I want to see the officer commanding. Well, then, take a good look at him, my lad, because I'm him. 
These here is headquarters. Or well, they would be if you stepped a little further back into that dugout. And I'm the commander of the Toytown Expeditionary Force. Higgins by name. Oh, oh, sir, you have got a funny hat. No, none of that, my lad, none of that. Well, I didn't know you at first. You looked so funny, but I do now. Why, you used to walk up and down as a sentry and suck peppermints in the square. I did, my lad, nor ain't ashamed of it, neither. Cos why, says you? Cos I'm proud to have risen from the ranks, I am. You take a good look at me, my lad, and you will see that you can't keep a good man down. Yes, sir, I've looked, and I see I can't. <laughs> It's been a lovely day, hasn't it? Did you come here and make all this to do just to talk about the weather? Oh, no, sir. I've escaped from Arkville. Escapes. You, you see, when I rode into Arkville three weeks ago to buy some red fire for the magician, I thought everyone looked at me in a funny way, and I thought perhaps my little nose is muddy, and I was trying to see myself in a shop window to find out when a soldier came up and said, Are you a toy towner? And I said, Yes. So he said, You'll have to come with me and be interred. I thought it would be dreadful to be interred, but it didn't hurt, really. Oh, fancy now. Well, they just shut me up in a thing like a huge big rabbit hutch with wire netting round it, and in the corner, who do you think was sitting back? The captain of the fort. His face had gone a pretty mauve colour, and he kept making funny, spluttering noises with his mouth because he was angry. And he told me there was a war on, and that Toy Town was certain to lose. Now he was interred. But I didn't mind much because they gave us all sorts of nice things to eat. Uh, well, you won't get nice things to eat in Toy Town, my lad. Because why, says you? Because there ain't nothing, only cabbage and rice puddings and such. All the buns and sweets and cakes and whatnot's all disappeared. Like magic, I guess. Someone has been and gone and bought them all. Oh, Mr. Officer Commanding, sir, I do hope Mr. Ernest hasn't gone thin. Thin ain't the word. He's had to punch a new hole in his belt, he has. I lent him my sword to do it with. This brings the horrors of war home to you, he says, when he done it. Not half it, don't I, says. But what was you saying about being a prisoner? Well, please, sir, I, I was a prisoner ever so long, and today I heard two soldiers talking outside the hutch, and they said they were going to win the war tonight. Win the war? What, them? Yes, sir. They said that you had dug a deep trench at the crossroads, and they couldn't get by, so they were going round. They just thought of it. They were going into Toy Town the other way and break all the windows and then duck Mr. Mayor in the pond. Oh, they sound very fierce. They must have been eating meat or something. Which way was they going? Round behind Mr. Noah's Ark, and on their way, they were going to tie tins to the tails of all Mr. Noah's animals. Oh, they was, was they? And how did you get out to tell me all this? Well, well, so when I heard, I knew I must escape and tell you. I knew it was my duty, so I said to myself, I must do a brave deed. And I was getting rather worried over the captain of the fort because he was turning movier and movier and kept shouting for his, his new brass hat. And he wouldn't eat buns or anything. So I nibbled through the wire like a rabbit and got out and, and ran hard and, uh, and here I am. Ah, good for you, my lad. Well, you can do another brave deed. Run on to Toy Town and tell the mayor with my compliments that the war is practically won. <coughs> this year army will now retire to the dark side of the ark for the wait up for the ark villains. That's Taddix, my lad, that is. And if you hear awful owls tonight, it won't be the animals having tins tied to their tails. It'll be them ark villains begging for mercy. That night, the whole of the Arquillian army walked into the trap prepared for it and surrendered after a short fight. The Arquillians were then shut up inside the Ark in the cages usually occupied by the animals, and although this caused great amusement, there was some grumbling later when the animals wanted to go to bed and found they had to sleep on the deck. Early in the morning, the Toy Town troops marched towards Arkville, broke all the windows and captured the mayor. They then returned triumphantly to Toy Town. The 
the mayor and most of the leading citizens of Toy Town were assembled in the mayor's study at the town hall when Captain Higgins entered with his prisoner. Your Worship and gents all, I'm happy to say that we have now won the war and the enemy can be seen free of charge in the cages at Old Noah's. I'm sure the town is proud of you, Captain. So this is the mayor of Arkville, is it? Good, good afternoon. It's a lovely day, isn't it? On the last occasion on which we met, sir, your behaviour was not that which one might have expected from a mayor and a gentleman. You were distinctly, um, how shall I put it? Uh... Popish, your worship. Most offensive. And he broke your windows. Yes. I take it, sir, that you now appear in the guise of a supplicant? Uh, please, Mr. Mayor, sir, is a supplicant a man who hides in a coal cellar? Oh, be quiet, my lamb. A supplicant is one who asks for something. Yes, and hasn't he been asking for something? Not half, he ain't. <laughs> and he'd get it, too, if it was left to me. As I was remarking, in the guise of a supplicant covered with coal dust, I have no wish to rub it in. <laughs> Was you a referring to the coal dust, your worship? Do be quiet, officer. Oh, ho. Uh, I have no wish to dwell upon the matter, and I'm sure we are now ready to let bygones be bygones and consider terms of peace. Oh, we don't want peace. The idea is absurd. We want the war to go on. What? Hey. Oh, if you please, sir, Mr. Mayor, sir, I know why Mr. Grouser wants the war to go on. It's because... He's been buying up all Mrs. Goose's cakes and cream buns and sweets and things. Quiet, lamb. Yes, and selling them over again for ever so much more, my friend Dennis told me. Ah, uh -huh. is that so, Mr. Grouser, sir? <laughs> well, now we know why you want the war to go on. You must be making a lot of money. And why not, officer? I have a perfect right to buy things. You ought to be grateful to me for keeping the business going during the war. Uh, there, there's another thing, your worship. Hmm? Uh, we have a lot of gunpowder left. Hmm? Uh, I've been making barrels and barrels of it. It's up at the fort now, and it seems a pity not to use it. Hmm? And I have just finished a really wonderful invention for winning the war. It's a, it's a thing like a great steamroller which goes along firing wooden pellets. And I have arranged a musical box inside so that as it rolls, it plays a splendid martial tune. Hmm? Uh, yes, uh, nothing can stop it. I should certainly have liked to try it. Hmm? That's right, sir. It's up at the fort with all the gunpowder and all our rifles and the prisoners' rifles, all simply crying to be used, it is. Well, I'm afraid it's too late now. The war's over, and it only remains for us to make terms with our neighbours. I... <laughs> I cannot forget that matter of the broken windows. Well, Toy Town, I will admit I was a trifle hasty over that affair, but I had been looking forward to shrimps for tea all the afternoon. Supposing I pay for the broken windows and we call it square? Well, of course, we should expect you to do that. <laughs> but then we've been put to great expense by the war itself. Who's to pay for that? Oh, if you please, Mr. Mayor, sir. I'm only a little lamb, and I don't understand very much, but if Mr. Grouser has been making all the money by buying up cakes and things and selling them at much more, well, don't you think he ought to pay for the war? What? A very shrewd suggestion, <laughs> my lamb. A scandalous suggestion! Go away, go away! You will get nothing out of me, sir! I will, I, I will go and live in Arkville first! Well, Captain Higgins, we are grateful for your assistance. And now the war is over, we shall be happy to present you with a nice, bright tin medal. Oh, thank you kindly, I'm sure. <laughs> we must now consider how to prevent a repetition of this unfortunate business. For we must have no more wars. They are too expensive. We've been proud to fight our Arvillian friends. I'm sure I speak for all when I say that we found them to be noble and gentlemanly enemies. Here they are. And I feel sure that they will join us in some little arrangement so that nobody has any more guns or gunpowder than anyone else. Now, officer, uh, I suggest that you go along to the fort and bring all the rifles you can find as a start. Then we will destroy them and... Before the mayor could finish the sentence, there was a terrific bang. Then, while they were all wondering what had happened and whether it was safe to go out and look... Into the room rushed Larry the Lamb. His face was black and rumpled, and he looked happy and excited. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh mis, mis, if you please, mis, Mr. Mayor, sir. Well, what mis, is it, mis, Madame? Take your time. Take your time. Well, well mis, Mr. Mayor, sir, if you please, sir, I've done it. There won't be any more war. Won't be any more war? Here, what have you been and done? Well, if you please, sir, and Mr. Mayor, sir, I heard you say there mustn't be any more war, so I went to the fort with all the gunpowder and, and rifles and things are, and I, I just set light to the gunpowder, and the fort and everything in it blew up with a dreadful bang. So now we can't have another war because there's nothing to fight it with. Well, really, this is an extraordinarily shrewd lamb. Extraordinarily shrewd. I don't believe I should ever have thought of that. That was The Great Toy Town War, a toy town play by S.G. Hume Beeman. Larry the Lamb was played by Derek McCulloch, who was also the narrator, Ernest the Policeman by Peter Clawton, Mr. Grouser by John Glyn Jones, the Mayor of Toy Town by Felix Felton, the Mayor of Arkville by Wilfred Babbage, the Magician and Captain Higgins by Norman Shelley, and the Inventor by Ivan Sampson. <laughs>